This video is brought to you by Poolonomics. For most pools, chlorine is the driving force behind clean and clear water, but it's actually free chlorine that makes the magic happen. If you're new to pool care or need a quick refresher, this is our beginner's guide to free chlorine, including what it is, how it works, and everything in between. Let's start from the top. What is free chlorine? When you add chlorine to your water, it immediately converts into hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ion, collectively known as free chlorine. Free chlorine is the chlorine in your pool that hasn't yet been used up. It's the active, sanitizing form. Chlorine in this form is ready to go to battle against bacteria, viruses and other nasty contaminants that find their way into your pool. This is important because a swimming pool is under constant attack from outside influences, including things like algae, insects, animals, rainwater and dirt, as well as contamination brought in by swimmers such as sweat, saliva, lotions, hair and even urine. Overall, without free chlorine to sanitise the water, your pool will soon become dirty, green and unsafe. How is it different from combined or total chlorine? You already know that free chlorine is the unused chlorine in your water, but free chlorine doesn't stay free for long. As it gets to work sanitizing your water, free chlorine latches onto contaminants to form a new compound called combined chlorine. In other words, if you stop adding chlorine to your pool, you will slowly lose free chlorine while gaining combined chlorine, like a chemical seesaw. Total chlorine is just the sum of both free chlorine and combined chlorine. What is the ideal free chlorine level? A long-standing recommendation in the pool business is to maintain a free chlorine level between 1 and 3 parts per million. This is generally high enough for effective sanitation, but it's not foolproof. Some pools are exposed to higher levels of contamination, which means they have a higher chlorine demand, which means they require a higher free chlorine level, even sometimes above 3 parts per million per day. But there's yet another mechanism involved. Most residential pools rely on cyanuric acid, also known as chlorine stabiliser. This substance shields chlorine from UV light, preventing it from breaking down too quickly under direct sunlight. While this is incredibly useful for preservation, cyanuric acid also suppresses chlorine, forcing you to add more chlorine to maintain the same sanitising power. Because of this, above all else, the ideal level should be based on your cyanuric acid level. As a good rule of thumb, your free chlorine level should be 7.5% of your cyanuric acid level if you have a traditional chlorine pool, and 5% if you have a saltwater pool. For example, if your cyanuric acid level is 60 parts per million, you would maintain a free chlorine level of around 4.5 parts per million in a traditional chlorine pool. We have a handy calculator over at Poolonomics if you need to run the numbers yourself. Check the description below for details. How does free chlorine influence other levels? Adding chlorine to your water directly increases your free chlorine level, but there's a lot more happening under the hood. The most immediate change is in your pH level. Different types of chlorine have wildly different pH levels, so they can have a very noticeable impact on the pH of your pool water. For example, most chlorine tablets will slowly lower the pH of your water as they dissolve because they themselves are acidic. Your total alkalinity will also be lowered during this process as it tries to buffer your pH against any acid introduced to the water. Finally, all stabilised chlorine products, including most tablets and granules, contain high levels of cyanuric acid, which raises your cyanuric acid level every time they're added to your pool. What causes free chlorine to change? The only thing that raises your free chlorine level is adding more chlorine to the water. Many shock treatments contain as much as 75% chlorine, which may not be obvious without reading the contents on the packet, especially if you're new to pool maintenance. While not as likely, a leftover chlorine tablet dissolving in a floater or possibly even your skimmer basket can be the culprit behind an unexplained chlorine increase. In general though, you don't have to worry about your free chlorine rising without cause if you know what you're putting into your water. On the other hand, free chlorine is used up during the sanitation process, so any contaminants in the water will eventually consume chlorine. That means any time someone uses your pool, it rains, leaves fall in, or virtually anything else touches your water, your free chlorine level will take a hit. 
Algae in particular is a big factor. Algae spores are everywhere in the environment, so they're always being introduced to your pool one way or another, adding a constant downward pull on your free chlorine. And let's not forget about sunlight. Free chlorine degrades very quickly under UV light. In fact, without stabilizer, a pool will lose almost all of its free chlorine in around two hours. Even with cyanuric acid to stabilize your chlorine, some of your chlorine is always susceptible to UV because of how stabilization works. While it strongly mitigates the impact sunlight has on your chlorine, it can't prevent it entirely. How do you test free chlorine? There are two main ways to test free chlorine in your pool. The first way is by using a test strip. Pool test strips are thin white strips with five colored tabs. Each tab represents one of the five primary pool parameters, pH, total alkalinity, cyanuric acid, calcium hardness, and of course, free chlorine. A strip is dipped directly into the pool water, causing each individual tab to change color. These colors are compared against a color chart to get a reading. The second way is using a liquid test kit, otherwise called a drop test kit. As the name suggests, it uses drops of liquid, known as reagents, to color a sample of water taken from your pool, which is then also compared against a color chart. Both methods are viable for measuring free chlorine, but while strips are cheaper and easier to use, liquid test kits will always provide a more accurate reading. How do you adjust free chlorine? The easiest and fastest way to raise your free chlorine level is to add either granular or liquid chlorine to your water. Granular chlorine is dichlor, trichlor or calcium hypochlorite and is typically dissolved in a bucket before being poured around the perimeter of your pool. Liquid chlorine is sodium hypochlorite and this can be poured directly into your pool. Either of these will raise your free chlorine level quickly, which is helpful when your residual chlorine level falls too low or when you're facing serious contamination in your water. Chlorine tablets are usually trichlor and are placed in a chlorine floater or feeder to dissolve slowly over time. Tablets are better for maintaining your residual chlorine level, meaning they help keep the free chlorine stable over days or weeks rather than give you a sudden and dramatic increase. Lowering your free chlorine level isn't quite as straightforward. Fortunately, you rarely have to worry about keeping it down. What's more, assuming you have some cyanuric acid in your water, you can safely swim at levels far exceeding the recommended chlorine level for your pool. For example, if you have 50 parts per million of cyanuric acid, a free chlorine level of up to 20 parts per million is still considered safe to swim. However, if you absolutely need to lower it, your best course of action is often to just wait it out. Most pools like around 2 to 3 parts per million of free chlorine per day, so it should only take a few days at most to get back to a safe level. For a more immediate solution, you can use a chlorine neutralizer like sodium thiosulfate, which will help to break your chlorine down within a few hours. Lastly, draining and replacing some of your water is always an option, but it's rarely cost-effective as it removes more than just chlorine. How do you maintain free chlorine? All pools lose free chlorine over time. That just means the chlorine is doing its job. As long as you continue to add more, you'll always be able to replenish what you lose and maintain a relatively stable free chlorine level. As mentioned earlier, tablets are ideal for this because they slowly release chlorine as they dissolve. You also have some control over how much chlorine is released over time by adjusting the number of tablets you use. An alternative approach is to add granular or liquid chlorine on a daily basis, adding a day's worth of chlorine loss with each top-up. If you have an outdoor pool, cyanuric acid, or chlorine stabilizer, is pretty much non-negotiable for maintaining your free chlorine level. Most tablet and granular forms of chlorine contain cyanuric acid. You can also add it separately if you're using unstabilized chlorine, such as liquid chlorine, which is beneficial, seeing as too much cyanuric acid will lock up your free chlorine and prevent it from working effectively. This is known as chlorine lock. Finally, Taking steps to prevent unnecessary contamination will reduce the impact on your free chlorine, such as regular brushing and vacuuming, showering before using the pool, and covering the water when the pool is not being used. So there you have it, a complete overview and beginner's guide to free chlorine in a swimming pool. Check the description below for links to our full companion article, along with supporting articles for many of the points discussed in the video. We also have a free downloadable and printable checklist to help with your pool maintenance schedule. You can get it for free at poolonomics.com checklist.
That's all from us. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for all things pool care.